welcome dear children so today the topic is verbs we all know what verbs are you all know that action words are also known as verbs now here if you see the list of picture here it tells us different actions uh, like draw hop jump read write dance dive swim all these are action words but again there are certain words which are not action words and yet they are verbs what are those verbs or what are those words that we are going to deal with in this module so what we are going to learn in this module is what are verbs and what are different kinds of verbs and the verbs that are not action words and yet they are verbs so let's move ahead activity is a very fun activity and this is also known as the z is zapped okay now why did why do i call it z is zapped okay <clears throat> why because if you see the letter z i have not given you the picture is zapped in a picture and that is why i have written it as z is zapped so if z is zapped then what are these all letters doing all these letters here are are actually um, associated with a with a kind of an action okay or uh, they are being done something uh, something has been done to them so what is that you are going to guess with the help of the pictures now the first one i can give you the example of the first one so that it becomes easy for you to guess the others now see first one is b and here if you see there's a dog trying to bite it and it's been bitten also the see the upper part of the b is bitten so you can call b is bitten so you can try and guess the rest of the letters what are they being uh, what what has what has what has been done to them okay so i can give you some time wherein you can guess yes of course so now you've guessed it right it is r is reversed if you see c r is reversed v here is veiled veiled right there's a veil here curtains which is trying to um, actually cover v right so v is veiled d is yes it is drowned it is drowned in this fish pond if you see and s is soaked Yes, there's a water splashing on S, so of course it is soaked. And P is pecked. Yes, so uh, a bird is pecking P, so P is pecked. Yeah, this is this activity wherein, if you see, you have come across various verbs here, right? So this helps you to enhance your vocabulary when it it when it comes to verbs. Now we have another activity, and let's see what is that. okay so here we are with our another activity this activity is you have to find siblings now siblings we all know what siblings are right so uh, you know there are few words the lost words we call it there's a column here uh, known as lost words now they had come to a big fair in the city with their look alike siblings so look alike the siblings they look alike and the problem is that they got lost is the fair is huge and humongous okay so the fair is huge so that they all got lost so we have the lost words and the siblings so i guess every word has at least two siblings so you are what you are going to do is in the sibling column you are going to find the uh, word which will look alike or sound alike the words that are in the lost words okay lost words column for example nibble so what as per you can be the sibling of nibble what as per you will sound more like nibble or which has the same meaning like nibble so in the same way you are going to write for seven lost words at least two siblings each am i uh, i hope i'm clear so this activity you are going to do in your english grammar notebook wherein you are going to name the activity as find the siblings with the topic name as verb on top and you are going to draw this column with the lost words and siblings and then we are going to discuss it and see uh, how how much have you understood and how much have you 
done. Okay, so let's move ahead. Now we are going to do verbs. We are going to know and discuss what are verbs. Now verbs, a verb is the most important part of the sentence. There can be no sentence without a verb and it tells us what a person or a thing does or what happens. Of course, we all know that without a verb, the meaning or the sentence will be incomplete. The sentence will not make a complete sense. And we all also know the structure of the sentence is subject plus verb plus object. Sometimes it is subject plus verb. So a verb in a sentence is mandatory. If you don't use a verb, it will not make sense. See, let's, let's take an example. Here, the cobbler mended the shoes. Here, if you see, the cobbler is the subject, mended is the verb, and the shoes is the object. So, if I write this sentence that the cobbler, uh, the shoes, will it make any sense? Of course not. So, mended, which is the verb, which is telling us about the action or the thing that has been done, is very, very important. Let's take another example. Sheila her a letter. Does this make any sense? Of course not. This makes no sense and, is, and it is not a sentence in fact. If I tell you this sentence, you will be baffled and you will think what the teacher is telling. So instead of this, if I add, if you see here, a verb is missing, right? And if I add a verb here, it will make sense. For example, it is if I write Sheila her letter instead of Sheila her a letter, I write Sheila wrote her a letter. It is making complete sense. And you will also not think that the teacher is just blabbering. Of course, I will make sense if I tell you this sentence. So in a sentence, if you if you have seen the examples, whenever you take out a verb from a sentence, it loses all its meaning. So a sentence should have and always, always and always must have a verb in it to make a complete sense, to make complete sense. So if you want to make your sentence sensible, you have to use verb. So verb is a very important element in a sentence. Now here, if you see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six kinds of verbs or six types of verbs. Main verb, helping verb, the verb be, the verb have, the verb do and modal verbs. Okay, so you all know about main verbs and helping verbs, but there are verbs as I told you, which does not, uh, you know, it, it doesn't or it is not known as an action verb or action word, but still it is a verb. For example, be verb like is, am, are, all these are be verb. Have verb, has, have, had, do verbs, do, does, did, doing, done, all these are do verbs. Modal verbs, can, could, must, need, ought to, might, etc. And helping verb also, if you see, it has is, am, were, has, was, etc. So is, which is used in be verb, is also used as an helping verb. Has, which is used in have verb, is also used as a helping verb. So what is the difference? And what are be verbs? What are have verbs? What are do verbs? And what are modal verbs? We are going to do separately one by one for better understanding. First, we will deal with main verbs, which has two categories, that is regular verbs and irregular verbs. Now we will learn about main verbs. Now main verb is the most important verb in a sentence. It shows action, it shows state, it also shows possession. So the main verb nece not necessarily or does not necessarily only show action. It can also show the state in which uh, the subject is or it can also show the possession which the subject has. Okay. Uh, a possession of a particular thing that a subject has. Like for example, the batsman hit the ball. Now here, the batsman is the subject and hit is the verb. Hit is the action verb, right? It is an action word. It is showing the action of hitting the ball. So this is of course main verb which is showing the action. But in the next sentence, I was exhausted. Here the main verb is was. 
it is not showing any action though it is not telling us about any kind of action but it is telling us about the state of the subject i subject is the i so it is telling how, what was the state of the subject i so what was the state i was exhausted so this is showing the uh, state of the subject so it is also main verb in the third sentence meena has the most exciting games in the world has is the main verb and it is showing possession possession that the subject has now meena has what meena has the most exciting games in the world so here although has is not showing any kind of action it is the main verb and it is showing the possession of the most exciting games uh, and who possesses it meena that is the subject so principal verb or main verb can show action it can show the state of the subject or it can show the possession of a particular thing that the subject has now this is something important that we must know that the main verb can be changed according to the other words in the sentence it can change in its tense right if i say she bake she bakes uh, excellent cookies here i have used present tense bakes but if i want to change it into something else i can also write it she baked excellent cookies yesterday so since i have used yesterday here i have changed the verb from bakes to baked so again according to other words in the sentence the main verb can change if the subject changes from singular to plural we can change the main verb like if i say i um, i write letters to my sister since it is i i have used the plural verb right but if i change it into she it will be she writes x uh, letter to her sister now again she i have from right i have changed it to writes because earlier it was i write now it is she writes so as i told you earlier main verbs can change according to other words in the sentence uh it can change according to the subject if there is a change in the subject the main verb can change if there is a change in the tense the main verb can change if there is a change in time the main verb can change so now let's look at the different kinds of main verbs now types of main verbs there are two types of main verbs regular verbs which are also known as weak verbs and irregular verbs which are also known as strong verbs now what is the difference between regular verb and irregular verbs see the name itself is self explanatory here telling us regular verb so regular means something that follows a regularity so a verb which ends with either uh, you know a verb which can form its past tense by adding d ed or t are known as regular verbs for example capture can uh, is changed to captured and achieve is changed to achieved so here if you see ed and d has been added so any verb who uh, you know uh, the past tense of which can be changed uh, by adding d or ed or t is actually known as regular verbs or weak verbs irregular verb on the other hand actually it shows uh, it doesn't show much change and there is a change in the inside vowels of the present tense for example arise changes to arose and arisen so arise here the inside vowel is i and in past tense it has changed to o similarly dig changes to duck and dug so dig which had a inside vowel i has changed to dug and if you see there is no d e d or t at the end so the basic difference between regular and irregular verb is the regular verb will change uh, or will form its past tense by adding d e d or t but irregular verb doesn't have any uh, uh, any change of that sort it doesn't have any d e d or t at the end moreover uh, the inside vowel of the regular verb changes irregular verb changes 
in present tense it is something else and in past tense the inside vowel changes but again there is an exception uh, if you look at this example buy which changes to bought catch which changes to caught and tell which changes to told in its from present to past tense if you see buy has u and bought has o u so there is a change in the vowel inside vowel and u will of course can claim that it should be irregular verb because the inside vowel has changed but i will tell you no why because at the end there is t d something like that right so e e d d t any of these three if there is uh, at the end then even if the inside vowel changes that verb has to be regular verb or weak verb so that is the difference between regular verb and weak verb we have already discussed about the difference between regular and irregular verbs now uh, uh, i have attached uh, a list of uh, i mean not list two three slides of regular and irregular verbs and uh, the forms of these regular and irregular verbs in v1 v2 and v3 that is present tense past tense and past participle how they change all these uh, changes and all these are given in column uh, in the list below so what you uh, you are supposed to do you need to write all these uh, um, all the list in your grammar english grammar notebook and you are supposed to learn it because these regular and irregular verbs you have to learn uh, so that you can use it correctly this brings us to the end of part 1 that is uh, verbs and in this part 1 we have uh, dealt with verbs what are verbs what are uh, different types of verbs we have also dealt in detail uh, with main verbs and the different kinds of main verbs that is regular and irregular verbs also a catalog of regular and irregular verb has been attached over here which you are supposed to write in your english grammar notebook and soon you will get your pen we are going to proceed with verbs and the different kinds of verbs thank you